Hey guys, this is Whisper in the Wind 2007 here, and uh, today I have got a video uh, of what I think will be the top 10 decks of the next format, of um, which is April 15. Uh, heading into this, we've had some quite big changes on the Forbidden Slash Limited list, with uh, quite a lot of good cards getting hit. We've lost all the Drain Rulers, lost uh, Snatch Steel. Personally, I'm glad that's gone. Uh, you know. Won far too many games that card, so uh, quite glad that's gone. Uh, we had, had uh, Tall Guy down to one, uh, Sacrifice down to one, you know, and also big f uh, Floodgate cards, Skill Drain and uh, Vanity's Emptiness both down to one. So big changes uh, heading into the next format. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, go with what I think are the top ten. Number 10, I'm going to go with Chaos Dragons. Uh, you know, charge going up to 2, uh, being able to mill those cards and being able to search a light swarm, get an engine going, get more cards in the graveyard. You know, got cards like Raiden and Lumino, allows uh, synchro plays, allows XYZ plays. Uh, so um, I think, you know, it's going to be a deck that will be quite quite good next format because it's still got that strong ability just to spam the field with very powerful monsters red eyes darkness metal dragon being at one still a very good card light pulsar dragon great you know it banishing your eclipse wife and getting those more powerful dragons into hand and uh, also allowing for rank six plays um, uh, personally it's going to be very interesting if you're a Chaos Dragon player next format. I have seen some lately before the uh, change at tournaments they were still doing really good and I think this next format will be a very good format for Chaos Dragons. Number nine I am going to go with Heretics. Uh, I think you know with the free Heretic Seal Convocation being back in the game helps out massively with the consistency and uh, spell and trap cards, I think, are going to come back. You know, going to get a lot of trap heavy decks. And um, the ability of the deck to play Wingbeat of a Giant Dragon is going to be a humongous boost to the deck. And, um, you know, just summon any of your heretics that are over level 5, play Wingbeat, your opponent loses all their spell trap cards. And then it opens OTKs for the deck. Uh, its ability to play. Uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon by summoning Atum is again going to be another fantastic play. It can easily play number 95. Losing the Dragon Rulers is going to hurt that part of the deck a bit, but number 95 is still such a strong card. So uh, I'm, I think this is going to be another deck that is going to come back, and it's going to come back with a bit of a vengeance. So um, it's, you know, personally, I'm trying to build the deck at the moment. And uh, I, th I think we're going to have a bit of fun with this. Number eight, I'm going to go with Sylvans. Uh, probably a bit too low on this list. But uh, going into the next format, uh, got the free Lone Fire Blossom. That's going to be a massive, massive boost to the deck. Uh, and if you imagine having free Lone Fire in the grave, playing Soul Charge, that's going to be almost auto win for the deck. Um, its ability to make very strong synchro monsters, almost any level synchro monster you can think of, it can make it almost any rank in the game of XYZs. Uh, you know, you get out your Draco Sacks or your Big Eyes, uh, its ability to make Felgrand is going to be a huge, huge boost for the deck with uh, so many in the cross decks being around at the moment. You know, if you go for any sort of attack direct or into one of their monsters, they drop a Valkyrus, just use um, Felgrand and uh, their Valkyrus will not resolve, so you could inflict massive damage. And then, if they try and Trishula it next turn, just use um, its effect on the Trishula, and that massively hurts the Cross. So I've I've put it at number eight, but it's probably a bit too low. But maybe towards the end of the format, it will probably be a lot higher on that list. Number seven, I am going to go with Fire Fists, and in particular Free Axis. Uh, Free Axis is a very very good build of uh, Fire Fist. Getting out your rank free plays, getting out your horse princes, so, you know, it's getting tankies and tensus easily onto the board is going to be a big help to this deck. And uh, I, 
I personally think it's going to be, if you come up against it, it's going to be a very hard deck to play around. So, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of uh, Fire Fist players are going to be loving the next format. You've got Wolfbark at free, Spirit at free. So uh, I think this is going to be another strong deck, this format. Number six, Volcanics. Uh, you know, it's a very, very difficult deck to play around with. Being able to get their scatter shots into the grave quite easily with uh, Blaze Accelerator, you know, it's it's a very difficult deck to play in regionals or uh, uh, YCSs because I I do feel that a lot of them do play a bit slow, and uh, the idea of the deck most of the time can be just to get into time, get those scatter shots going and you could quite easily find yourself winning on life points in time. Uh, um, you know, obviously they got a Volcanic Counter which again is a very difficult card to play around because uh, sometimes your opponent, if they're on such low life points, they're not going to want to attack and um, it, it'll, be, it'll be very difficult for some decks to play around. Uh, number five, you send use. I think this is a very underrated deck at the moment uh, it's a ability of normal summon after normal summon after normal summon after normal summon very very good and uh, yeah you could search out so many cards and their monsters searchable by Tenki so massively consistent deck they can main deck macro and defissure you know going down to one vanities it's going to help the uh, it's going to hurt the deck sorry but yeah it, if it gets that vanities on the field it's going to be quite hard for some decks to get rid of it because where it, they all bounce back in the end phase the ability of those cards then dodge Raigeki's, dodge Dark Holes so um, it's going to be hard for your opponent to get rid of like, Vanities if they can get it on the board and its ability to, to make any really good rank 4 XYZ you know, Castell, Lightning Shidori uh, pretty much any good rank 4 you can think of, it will make it and uh, that will probably be the difference between winning and losing games for them. Uh, number 4, I am going to go Burning Abyss. This deck did take quite a big hit with um, Tall Guy going down to 1. But I think they can play their way around this, so, you know, play Crane Crane and that will help get their Dantes on the board. Just sort of, just like what they did with um, Tall Guide. Uh, with um, Tall Guy being down to one, they might be a bit more reliant on Scarm to search out Tall Guy and get their plays going. But you think they still got Dante at three, Virgil still at three, Firelake is at three. They're all very, very good cards. And uh, you know, you've got Farah, uh, however you pronounce it, is a, um, I think it's Farfa. Um, you know, being able to banish an opponent's monster just to the end phase but still that can be the difference between winning and losing the game and its ability to use very strong trap cards is very good for the deck. Number three I am going with Shadows. Largely dodged the last ban list but I think it needed you know if it got hit anymore the deck was dead and so not really having anything hit in the last ban list is a massive massive thing for the deck because I think it got overly hit in previous uh, ban lists with Morale Tech going down to one Super Poly being banned and I think Super Poly yes it was a broken card but being at one I think was fair for the deck so um, largely dodging a lot of this uh, latest uh, list is going to be a huge huge boost for the deck and uh, as uh, posted with um, Dowdy's the deck profile which I'll link in the description even in the last format, it was still a very, very good deck. And with Star Star Elves coming out soon, I think this can potentially push itself higher up the list. Uh, number two, I'm going to go Clifford. Uh, Clifford probably got the biggest hit in the ban list. Uh, you know, losing the uh, two Vanities empty list, losing two Skill Drain, losing two Sacrifice, big hits for the deck. You know, they do still have two Clifford Scout, it's still a very good card. And you can still search it off of uh, uh, Summoner's Art. So I, th I think the deck will be hit a bit, but they still have cards like Reculiate, 
um, Clifford Stealth, Clifford Towers is still going to be a very strong deck and uh, people are saying like the deck's going to die, I don't think it is going to die and uh, it's, I think it's still going to be very hard, very hard to beat and most decks just lose when tower come, Towers comes out Finally number one, I'm going to go with Necroz um, Necroz is still going to be a very strong deck in this next format you know, they did lose a couple of preparation of rights, but still they got, you know, the two bros which search pretty much anything in the deck and then you got uh, Clausulus and pretty much all, all of it, Unicorn, they're all very strong cards and I don't think the deck's going to be hurt hurt that bad with the latest Forbidden and Limited list. Trisha is still a thing and uh, with some of these cards being hit I can see more decisive armors being played. So I think it's still going to be a very strong deck next format, and uh, you know it's got the ability to gin lock. You know, uh, rank four X Y Zs are quite easy. Get the Levarval chains out, dump your um, uh, gin in the graveyard, and then in most cases that can be auto win. You know, uh, Vanity's going down to one. It's going to be a big help to the deck. So um, you know it. I, I still think it's going to be number one. I don't think it's going to be as good as it once was, but I still think it's going to be the strongest deck in this next format. But we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, so that is my top ten uh, prediction for the uh, next format. Uh, you know, you, you can feel free to get, disagree with um, what I said. It's just an opinion. And uh, personally, I would like to hear what you think would be top ten. So, you know, feel free to post your uh, uh, suggestions in the comments below. But uh, heading into the next format, I think we've got a very, very exciting format to begin with. It's a bit more open. Some of the older decks which had their good cards hit before are going to get that big boost up. And then the, the decks at the top have uh, got some of their big cards hit. So it's sort of closing that gap uh, between the, the top decks and you know some of the more rogue and anti-meta decks. So personally, I'm looking forward to this next format and I hope... You know, I hope we do get like we had last summer. We had so many competitive decks that just about anything could top because everything was so good at that moment at the time. You know, we had decks like Mermails, Evil Swarm, Light Swarm, Gear Gear. They they were all topping at the time. Trap Tricks was probably the best of the format, but it, it still had some very good matchups against a lot of decks. So we um, just have to wait and see what we get next format. I think it's very, a very exciting time to be a Yu-Gi-Oh player again. And, uh, you know, just have to wait and see and I'm really looking forward to it. But until next time, this is Whisper in the Wind 2007, signing out.